Hello everyone, Nikita here. The deck list that we will be focusing on today is the blue-green combo deck that Hyped recently won the We Play tournament with. Link in the description. This deck is also known as the Storm deck or the One Turn Kill deck. The combo itself is not too particularly difficult, but being a combo deck there is plenty of nuance and setup that it has that is worth discussing. This video should give you some insight and tips on how to pilot it, so let's get started. Let's have a look at the heroes first. Kana is the most important hero here, as she helps flood boards all by herself. Zeus and Ogre Magi are basically only here to enable casting cards like at any cost and annihilation on lanes that you are behind in. Ogre Magi's passive can help you further in this regard and provide some serious card advantage if you are lucky. The deck requires a splash of green because of the ramp that the color provides, with cards like Stars Align and Roseleaf Druid. Green is also there to allow us to play one of the strongest heroes, Drow Ranger. Drow's passive helps develop threatening boards and her signature card, Gust, is an integral part of the combo. That being said, you want Drow Ranger to be deployed on round 2, because you don't want her to die instantly to those pesky early red or black heroes. Deploying her on round 2 gives you the chance of putting her in a safe or winning lane. On average, you can begin the combo as early as turn 7. To start the combo, you will first need to have initiative in the lane and have both a blue and green hero there as well. You then lead with Gust, which will stop your opponent from playing cards, items excluded. It's important you do this first, so your opponent does not kill your heroes or clear the board in response to you going off. Following up, you play Stars Align and Aghanim Sanctum, or activate your Sanctum if you have already one in that lane. This is all to make sure you have 9 mana to play Incarnation of Salomene, the key part of this combo. If you have 9 mana after playing Gust, then you can skip a few of the previous steps, because once you have played Incarnation, you essentially have infinite mana to play the rest of the cards in your hand. It is recommended to play all of your draw spells first so you can establish an optimal order in which to cast the rest of your cards. Once you have played all of your draw cards, try to get as many damaged units as you can to maximize the value from Prey on the Weak. After casting Prey on the Weak, play Emissary of the Quorum, or 2, and activate their abilities. By the end of this, if everything went correctly, you should have developed a full board of creeps and secured the kill on the tower. This combo is very versatile, and you will not always have to follow the same procedure every game to pop off. During the combo, having Ogre Magi in the lane is extremely valuable, since the 25% chance to give you back spells will help make sure you don't run out of cards if you only have parts of the combo in your hand. This deck can both push two lanes or kill the Ancient in a single lane. You will have to evaluate every game which strategy is faster and go based off of that. Even if Kana is successfully pushing the Ancient on her own, you should not ignore the other lanes that your heroes are in, to ensure that you maintain board presence wherever you are able to. Combo decks are easy to pick up but are difficult to master, and it'll take a few games to get a full understanding of the setups that can start the combo. But once you do, you will have a lot of fun playing card after card without your opponent being able to do anything and losing a tower in the process. Unearthed Secrets is one of those cards that can pump out huge value if left unchecked. This deck has many improvements, so you can even use it as removal bait so that they don't mess with your important improvements like Sanctum or Ignite. Ideally, you want to play it in a lane that you know you will take damage in. However, it's recommended not to have it in the lane that Kana resides. According to Hyped, Unearthed Secrets almost always goes in lane 3, because you always want to contest both the left lane and the lane Kana is in, meaning it is okay to give up lane 3 if you're doing decent in the first two. Ignite is another card that usually flies under the radar. Sometimes you can stack them in a lane and your opponent will be forced to avoid it or spend removal there. Ignite's versatility is also in that you can put it in a lane that you are fighting for, or in a lane that you might be taking too much damage in. Further, stacking two in a lane of the opposing Kana will make it significantly harder for them to develop anything there. At Any Cost is a card that hyped teched in after the group stages. A fantastic idea. At Any Cost hurts aggro decks a ton, giving you a chance to get those late game Annihilation and Thunder God's Wrath turns. Clears are your best friends, since you can easily get overrun due to your weak statted heroes. Therefore, using your clears at the right time to be able to get your combo later is very important. Speaking of clears, you need initiative to play those, or your opponent could remove the hero or silence it so that you can't. In the situation that you need to play cards in other, less important lanes, you can finish off with Arcane Assault to get the initiative and bring it into the next lane to cast whatever AoE you need. Remember, it's not necessarily important if your heroes die early. You want to be able to move them around to get them in the lane that they can be the most useful in. Hyped usually just plays out his Diabolic Revelations on turn 1 because he doesn't care if his heroes die. Drawing the combo pieces is that much more important. However, he does warn us that hero sacrifice should never come at the expense of towers losing a lot of health, so always weigh your outcomes. Hyped also believes that most current decks have an unfavorable matchup against blue-green combo. 
The decks that might be hard to deal with would be the ones that tech their item cards against this type of deck. Demagicking Maul and Obliterating Orb are pretty annoying, but the item that hurts this deck the most is Kalzareem Hourglass. This card will cause you to always be behind a turn and there is little you can do to play around it. You could possibly try to play all of your draw cards to set up for the combo in the future turns, but if the opponent has enough tools to disrupt your setup then there is not much that can be done. Our item deck is much simpler than traditional builds. Keep in mind that we don't really kill heroes unless we are wiping the board or playing a timely Thunder God's Wrath. So the three Traveler's Cloaks makes a bit more sense than something like Stonehall Cloak. Also, we need to get those Blink Daggers faster so we don't have to rely on our heroes dying to reposition them to other lanes. The Leather Armor is a bit unique. Its main purpose is being a cheap card to help cycle to your Blink Daggers. But it also helps protect our 7 health heroes against Axe and Legion Commander, who sport cards like Duel. There are unfortunately no budget alternatives for many of the cards included in this deck. Drow Ranger is unmatched in her passive and her signature is a crucial step in the combo to ensure that your opponent cannot react. Kana is also a much needed card to reliably flood one board and her signature will more often than not be the card that secures you the win during the combo. Annihilation and at any cost are other pricey cards that are essential to maintaining aggro strategies and have no real alternatives. Combo is an archetype that requires much more planning than aggro or midrange. It incorporates repositioning, stalling, and control strategies to get to that one turn where you can dump your hand and take the game. Threat evaluation will be key, and it'll take some time to experience all the setups that will enable your combo, which you can then anticipate earlier in later games. If all of this sounds like it's up your alley, then blue-green combo is the deck for you. Let us know in the comments what other deck spotlights you would like to see, and subscribe for future videos. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.